Okay, so before we get into the actual code, I just want to outline how it fundamentally works, this script. So there's a couple things that it does. It checks, first, it checks uh, the percent change in the day. So that's pretty self-explanatory. It'll take the open, it'll take the close, and it'll say, you know, this is 4%, and it'll give you an alert on that. And the reason why you might, why you might want to use that is, one, you're tracking your own stocks, or two, you're just trying to see how the general market is doing. So you might try to track the SPY, and if you see that the SPY, for example, this is the Apple stock, but if the SPY were to go up 4%, you know that that's a good day and the market is generally strong. Um, it also checks uh, the past five days. So in this example, it would look somewhere here maybe. Uh, it'll take that and it'll take that and then it'll calculate the percent change and just tell you how well it's been doing in the past five days just to give you a general sense of how things are going in the market. The next thing that it does is it will check if the price is crossing above or crossing below the SMA. So there's an example right here. So the close is below the SMA and then the next day's close is above the SMA. So you can see that there would be an example of the price crossing above the SMA. Another example of this is right here. This is the opposite though. So the price is above the SMA and in the next day it crosses below. <clears throat> so that would be an example of the the price crossing below the simple moving average. The other two things that it does is it checks if the low is touching the SMA. So you can see that right there. The low is below, but it closed higher. So that means that the low is touching the SMA. And then there's also the high touching the SMA, which is right here. So it's very faint, but you can see that the high was either right on the SMA or above it but it closed below her. So these are just examples of right here, this would be some kind of support. So price is trying to go lower than an SMA, but it ended up pushing higher. And right here, this is a resistance. So some, they were trying to push the price above and uh, continue or try to go upwards, but they ended up failing. They, and they closed way lower than uh, usual. And the last thing that this script does is it tells you the the percent away or the distance in percentage away from the uh, the simple moving average. So, for example, right here, <coughs> you would simply just take the distance from uh, the SMA to this, and you'll check take it as a percentage and see. You know, this might be that it's three percent above the simple moving average. And this is just a good gauge to tell you whether or not the market is doing strong relative to the past 200 days or doing really weak uh, relative to the past. So you can see here that there was it was weaker. So the percent, the percent distance was weak compared to the 200 day Okay, so now that we understand how this script works fundamentally, I just want to go through the code and outline all the things that I think are important. So the first things are the imports. So we need request, JSON, pandas, uh, the SMTP lib, which is for sending emails, and the time module. So those are just, whatever, simple, just import those. And the first function that we're going to be looking at is the send email. So the send email is relatively simple. You don't have to change anything in it. Uh, in order to make it work, you just have to change here. Your, you have to put in your email so and your password because what it does is it logs in to your email account and sends it to yourself. And then, so it needs your email and your password in order to do that. And it just takes a, pa uh, a message, a parameter message, and uses that to uh, send the alert. The next thing is the download data. So the download data has a URL. Uh, it is using the IEX trading API and it basically takes in a parameter ticker. So it uses the ticker symbol and makes the API, API request with that ticker symbol. Uh, once that happens, it uses that in a get request and it'll get the information and it'll load it from the text, the response.txt to a JSON. Uh, format, which would be the Python dictionary. And once that's done, 
then we're going to simply make rows and columns using a simple list in Python. And once that's done, we're going to put that list and use these columns in order to create a data frame using the pandas data frame, just so that it's easier for us to manipulate uh, stuff like that. So that's the section func second function, which is download data. That's how we're getting all of our information. The third one is the percent change. It's relatively simple. It just calculates the percent change. Uh, that way you don't have to do it in the actual code down here. So those are the three main functions that we're going to be using. You don't really have to understand how they work, just know what they kind of do. So send the mail, obviously sends the email, get data that gets the information for us, and the percent change is just a helper function. The uh, file name here is uh, symbols.txt. So you need another file in order to save the symbols information. So you have you know the spy, Apple, AMD, and Facebook. Uh, you have to save, have it on one line, that way when we actually look at the symbols here, uh, we open the file, take the line, and then split it using commas, uh, we can actually get the information. So then you'll have an array of Spy, Apple, AMD, and Facebook in this example. So basically if there's anything that you want to watch, like let's say I want to add in Tesla, uh, you know, you just put that on the end and now you're going to get an alert about Tesla. So after that's done, we have the main loop, which is um, which is all this, and we're doing while true because we want this to run 24/7. We don't want this to ever stop running, so we create an infinite loop in order to do that. And what we're doing here is we're downloading data and getting the current date using the iLock, which is uh, uses this syntax here to get the last element of the uh, date in the data structure and we're going to check the current date and basically see if the current date is equal to the previous date because if it is equal to the previous date that means that we've already sent this this alert here so we don't want to send it again right so you wouldn't want to send every single time this goes through you wouldn't want to send the same information over and over again we only want to send new information if it's a new date so we basically check the current date and um, if it isn't the same, so there's a new date or new information out, then we're going to go into this alert function and say that the previous date is equal to the current date. And that way we don't ever um, display or alert this information for this date, this previous date here. So we're going to just print out that the alert has fired just so then we know in console. And here is the main logic loop here. So um, what we're doing is we're going through each one of the symbols in this uh, text or the symbols.txt and we're going to start out by getting the information for that so for let's say spy it's going to it's going to get the data for spy and then it's going to calculate the SMA for the spy and it's going to look at the data.close then it's going to do the rolling window for it and it's going to get the mean which is basically how you cal calculate SMA with um, with the data frames object. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take uh, and get all the current information by using the iLock negative one so it's just easier on the eyes instead of writing out this every single time. So we have the current SMA, the current high, low, open and close. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to check if the message is equal to nothing and if it is then we're going to add on the date just so then we know what date it is at the very top and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the symbol so we know which one so it would be the spy for this one and we're going to tack on the current close the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the percent change in the day by using our percent change um, function and round it to two decimal places that way it isn't that long and convert it to a string and we're going to use the uh, plus equals to add that onto our message. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the weekly change. So the same thing, but the only difference here is that we're going to be using the data close dot i lock negative five because we want to look five days back because there's five days in a trading week. 
And the last thing that we're going to look at is the distance from the SMA. Um, so we're going to use the percent change again, but the only difference is we're using the current close and the current SMA to calculate that distance. And the last thing is the crosses. So the logic for the crosses are pretty easy. So we're going to basically check if the current close is greater than the current SMA. And the previous day close, which is I lock negative 2, is less than the current SMA. So looking at the this example, you'll see here the close is here and then the close is there. So the current close is above, but the um, previous close is actually below in that section. So that would be deemed as a cross above. So the same thing for the previous, or for crossing below would be just looking at the current close, is it less than the current SMA? And if the previous day close is greater than the current SMA, then that would mean that it's crossing below the um, the 200 day SMA in this example, or sorry, 50 day SMA in my example, which is relatively simple to understand. Uh, the next is the to check if the high is touching the SMA or if the low is touching the SMA. So we're basically going to check if the current high is greater than or equal to the SMA because we want to see if it's, you know, at the SMA or above it and if the current close is less than, right, because if if the current close is greater or if the current close is greater than but the high is also greater than, then that means that it's most likely a cross and it's not a touch. And same logic with the low. So we're just going to check if the current low is less than the current SMA, less than or equal to the current SMA, and if the current close is greater than the current SMA. And that'll give us um, a low touch the 50-day uh, SMA in my example. So once we have our message done, it's going to loop through um, this loop and do every single one of the companies in the symbols.txt. And once that's done, it's going to just check if it's um, if there's an actual message, and it's going to then use that send email to send the message, and we're going to print out. Uh, mail sent in console. And then our last thing to do is just sleep because we don't want this to be going off um, all the time because we're going to be bogging down the server and it's just um, not a nice thing to do to the API. So we're going to put in a sleep for 60 seconds or you could even do uh, maybe you want to do 10 minutes because um, you know you don't want to be constantly checking. So you might do 60 seconds times 10, which will give you 10 minutes. And that's about it. You can add anything onto the script and just tack it onto the end of the message. And then you can develop your own alerts with whatever you want to look at. You can look at Bollinger Bands. You can look at RSI. But hopefully this helps. And if you guys enjoyed the video, leave me a like and subscribe for future. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of algorithm algorithmic trading stuff and so if you like stuff like this where you're programming stuff and creating alerts and trying to make money by looking at technicals and using programming to do it then uh, give me a subscribe and hit that notification bell.